Last time on the Great Ace Attorney. There is but one key, and Mr. Windybank keeps it in his pocket at all times. Before he sleeps, he places it into a sm This is really- Wait, why do you know this? Uh, yeah, I can't- <laughs> like, What? Because I observe him every night to make sure that my belongings are kept I secure. Ha Mr. I hang from the light- lighting implement in his I room. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. He does find himself in, like, weird, like, spaces. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I hang from the ceiling lamp, and so he won't notice me. I disguise myself as a lamp and watch what he does. And now it's everyone's favorite part of any Ace Attorney game, <laughs> where we stumble around aimlessly because we don't know what the to do. A few moments later. No. 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 <laughs> Get out. That tiny thing in the foreground. Okay. Oh dear. Go bed it, you lot. Grumpy. Uh, uh, hello, Miss oh. Lestrade. I hope you have been well. Uh, what? You remember me then, do you? Well, I remember being completely surrounded by smoke, that's for sure. My name is Benedict. Uh, ah! <laughs> Perfect. Yes! Is yes! Benedict. Eggert Benedict. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> you there, in the black livery. Hand that disc to me at once, please. No, don't! He's lying! Grown-ups are all liars! Is this where it's gonna be like a Paragon or oh. Renegade thing? Oh, God! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Disillusion Plays The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, where we play the game and do the voices. Yeah. I'm Sarah. I'm Pete. And I'm Taylor. And just before we jump in, if you do like what we do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and ring the notification bell. Yes. <laughs> oh, sad to, I forgot sad about sad to start to start <laughs> Oh, that's right. Holmes was like, when he asked me to leave, I just went to the corner, yeah. devoid of any human contact. <laughs> For an aeon, I slowly devolved and shriveled into a rasin. <laughs> a rasin. <laughs> a rasin. A rasin. A rasin. A rasin. <laughs> For God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> oh, we're off to a good start. Pete's already great. A raisin! A raisin! <laughs> raisin! 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 <laughs> okay. Oh, poor Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> I feel simply awful for you. You know, you make raisins from grass. It would... It would seem... <laughs> that my inferences are correct. Oh? Surely you're not about to tell us. Brace yourself, boys uh -oh. and lady. That you solved the entire case once again? Oh, dear. My dear madam, sometimes I wonder where my genius for deduction to be... Where? Where? Where my genius for deduction to be commoditized? No, no, I think you mean where, Mr. Sholmes, because we can't see it. We don't know where your deduction is. <laughs> How much could I pawn it for? Oh, dear. <laughs> well, if I had to estimate, given your accuracy, I would probably say uh, about a half pence. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no more. It seems Mr. Sholmes has had another of his flashes of inspiration. <laughs> uh, but who knows if it will help to resolve the situation between Mr. Strahd and the mysterious gentleman. What's the right thing to do here? <laughs> leave, leave it. it. Just no, leave we're it. not going to listen to you, mate. Sorry. <laughs> right. Are we going to leave it? Are we going to listen? <laughs> do we just, you know what? Yeah, I kind of want to see what happens yep, if you leave, leave it. it. I wonder if he's going to I wonder if it's like, no, 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 I can't leave it as much as I'm tempted to. Yeah, Susato's going to get angry with yeah, us. That's smart. I, I bet Susato. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> yep. I don't know. If Mr. Shilm starts on one of his wild, rambling deductions now, it could just fan the flames of this argument. I think it would be sensible to try something else. Listen, Erohodo! What are you saying? Knew it. Uh, nothing. It was in my nothing. head. Nothing. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> the great detective has made one of his great deductions. He's sure to cut straight to the heart of the matter. Yeah, just like he did last time and the time before that. Mm. That's what I'm worried about. We don't need any more cuts around here. <laughs> Dear me. Yeah? <laughs> you yeah. seem decidedly agitated. Clearly, I shall have to take the reins. No, yes. no, that's fine. <laughs> 
Yes, please do, Mr. Sholmes. It's like, I imagine Ryunosuke's just like trying to clap his mouth over Suzanne's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Shush! Hush! <laughs> it looks like we're going to hear this deduction whether I want Whether I like it or not. Yes, you are, Mr. Marohodo. <laughs> Deep breaths, everybody. Mr. Suzato, please let go of my ear. <laughs> Well, Miss Lestrade, it would appear you find yourself in something of a predicament. <laughs> Where the blue blazes have you been, eh? Go sit on a fence! <laughs> Pardon? When a lady's in trouble, a children is supposed to be here to help! Straight away! Not an hour later! Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, a, I'm just like seeing a you died from Dark Souls <laughs> flashing up. Harsh. Oh. And who, pray tell, are you? Joseph Joe Star. I mean, <laughs> Herlock Scholz. Hmm. Mr. Eggert Benedict. You have, in my eyes, a veritably encyclopedic array of curiosities about your person. Nevertheless, there are two immovable conclusions I have drawn. I oh dear. beg your pardon. The first is this. The true reason for your visit to this prawn prawn, prawn. the prawn. the <laughs> true prawn. reason prawn book of yes, me. I know. <laughs> Uh, well, no, I meant like prawn brokery, like, oh, yes, I actually, I didn't mean to purchase items at all. I've always wanted to sell prawns. <laughs> but I, I misspelled the name of the shop, and well, you know. Things took it, it went from there, really. <laughs> the true reason for your visit to this pawn brokery today is something you have not yet revealed. <clears throat> ah, touched a nerve, have I? <laughs> and the second is this. A considerable crime is in contemplation. One you will or you, one you will orchestrate with intent to steal a vast sum of money. Well, Mr. Benedict, what say you to my deductions? Oh. How? That's it. How? He's turned as white as a hard-boiled egg. Well, he would have been. <laughs> you're right, Sarah. <laughs> she would. He would have been if he was still wearing the other coat, the other That's jacket. That's true. <laughs> it would seem that once again, Mr. Sholmes has made a flawless deduction. Ah, well, just wait. It'll all go wrong, Mr. Zato. Just okay. who do you think you are, sir? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. As I hoped. Someone who didn't know my name. <laughs> that is precisely the pained expression I was looking for. <laughs> so, shall we begin? The time has come for yet another Herlock Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular! Oh, how wonderful! Oh dear. I do, l I do enjoy those. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. I'm so glad. <laughs> the ladies love them. Apparently. <laughs> Mr. Wee Man's mm. aim. First of all, we must ask ourselves on what business you have ventured to this pawn brokery today. <laughs> so the spotlights always make me laugh. Oh, I didn't know you had installed <laughs> spotlights as well, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> I take them every. Is that why my power bill has gone up so much? I take. Bloody hell! I take them everywhere I go. <laughs> you claim to have followed this pickpocket here, having the, had the redemption ticket stolen from you on the street. But that is most certainly a lie. The real oh, truth hello. is something quite different. As revealed by that which you hold in your hand. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the Staff Recruitment Flyer. Oh. Ow! What happened there? <laughs> I flung my headphones off my. I had an itch and I was like, <laughs> oh, No! No! <laughs> everything's, everything's going wrong! We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Apologies. 
<laughs> and then I just, yeah, went to grab my headphones and threw For the controller For God's off. sake, Pete, this is a professional production. Try to show some professionals. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cast your listening device about hither and thither. <laughs> the piece of paper in your hand is a staff wanted advertisement from this very shop. Yet even the most unobservant would soon realize that a man of your appearance has no need of such employ. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. AG. <clears throat> The, Ag. the cane, Ag. <laughs> which you unwittingly clutch to your person, exhibits an uncontrovertible contradiction. Oh no! <laughs> what utter rot! I've had this cane for years. What is with this voice? Ah! <laughs> oh, you! Listen, what, what utter rot! <laughs> what utter rot! I've had this cane for years. There we go. The contradiction of which I speak is, of course. The missing ferule, <laughs> fer ferule. Not, not the not initials. Not the initials, no. <laughs> the end of any walking cane should be terminated with a metal ferule, 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 ferule. to protect the wooden tip. Just the tip, indeed. And yet, <laughs> detailed analysis shows the wooden tip of this stick to be. Utterly bare. My goodness, you enjoy going bareback, do you, with your long stick? Therefore, there is only one conclusion. The rod that you <laughs> hold in your hand, which appears to be a walking cane and absolutely not anything else, <laughs> is in fact no cane at all. What? It's it's a it's a dagger. There's a dagger in the end. You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? Uh, I. Well, I. And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer of the next conundrum to present itself. <laughs> Namely, what is the truth? What is the truth behind this rod you bear? Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. The handle, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle you see. From the moment I saw it, my suspicions were aroused. <laughs> what walking cane demands such a stout handle, mused I. But of course, as I said, this is no walking cane. No, that rod is a penis. Oh! Is the broken handle of a shovel. Sarah, don't don't go. Oh! Because this is Shomes. Remember, it's Shomes doing it. This could just be complete rubbish. No, but the shape is is the same. What? <laughs> Are you insane? And now, having determined this undeniable truth, the conclusion is clear. Your true motive for coming here was to take employment at this establishment in order to excavate the ground beneath the premises. Really? <laughs> what a calculated crime you have conceived, sir. A wickedly calculated crime. He is just a complete burk, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> <Just like, laughs> it's still underneath the I, uh, <clears throat> I believe his calculations may have led to a, a slightly wrong answer. <laughs> but he's still going. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. That's not really necessary, Mr. Shobes. Uh, You've already made a fool of yourself already. Don't do... Oh, okay. For we Carry must on, expose <laughs> the details of this elaborate crime you have in the planning. This is utterly absurd. Don't worry, you, you get used to it. You suggest that of. I, a gentleman, intend to excavate the ground beneath this pawn brokery with a broken shovel? What on earth do you propose I could expect to find there? Certainly not my dungeon. <laughs> some long forgotten treasure, I suppose. Save for some. save for such a fanciful theory, what possible reason could I have to do as you say? Oh, but there is ample reason. As you are only too well aware, Mr. Benedict, 
Ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. <laughs> what? Why do I always do that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let us consider what would motivate a man to infiltrate a shop such as this and covertly dig beneath its floor. The answer is revealed by the council notice on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. Absolutely, no, it's the it's the passphrase. Book, Absolutely right. not mm. anything else. This letter gives notice of public works to be carried out in your local area. In the local area, sorry. And according to the enclosed plan of the upcoming sewer sewerage works, beneath this shop runs a sewer that adjoins another, one that runs under the bank and the, on the oh. opposite side of the road. <laughs> this madness has entered the sewers now, has it? Yes, his mind is certainly in the gutter at the very least. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'd say that, but... I think ours are, Taylor. Right there with mine. <laughs> <laughs> By excavating the ground beneath our feet, you would gain access to the waterway. That flow... Oh, that flow... Blah, 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 wrong voice. <laughs> <laughs> that flows in very close proximity to the great vault of the financial institution opposite. What are you? In summary... You devised a master plan to pull off an elaborate bank robbery by the dint of the underground tunnel. Tunnel. I mean, all he really needs is a rubber a rubber animal mask. <laughs> and then you can just, like, walk in and, and open the plan. safe. Which brings us at last to the final chapter of this lurid scheme. With... With what plunder did the thief hope to make off from the underground vault of the bank? Are you quite serious? Having consulted with, with, with Scottish Yard some days ago, I happen to know the answer. But naturally, the answer is no secret to you, is it, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about! I need to inhale. <laughs> I need to, yes, like, breathe. Let me breathe in. <laughs> like, <laughs> allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard tells us all we need to know. A postcard of the Great Exhibition? I'm afraid you've quite lost me. Currently in the final stages of preparation, the Great Exhibition will soon be, soon be underway and the government has provided extra funds to complete its centerpiece, the Crystal Tower. Funds that currently sit in the vault of the bank on the other side of this road. I know because I personally checked them. <laughs> I had to be careful not to dip in myself. Now recall, Mr. Sholmes, I'm going to tell you about all the treasures in the vault that's been put there for safekeeping, but you're not to mention it to any other living person or it would create an enormous security Actually, that risk. is a good point, <laughs> thinking about it. Like, mm. he's blabbing all this out. <laughs> Pardon? Yes, the considerable crime you have been contemplating that I haven't just given you the idea Well, I for. wasn't, but now you've mentioned <laughs> it. <laughs> is the theft of that which sits in the vault of that bank, the special reserved funds for the Great Exhibition. Of course. There's no need to worry, everyone. <laughs> There's nobody who <laughs> possibly knows about oh, what's going on God. who would possibly- Oh, Shomes! Of course. <laughs> that is top secret police information, so keep it under your hat, please. Oh, oh we were joking about it, but it's the truth. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, Hurley, you've got to put your foot in it now, haven't you? No, we weren't. I wasn't joking. There was no. <laughs> there was no joke. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great idiocy, <laughs> great blurting. I've got this funny feeling like I'm going to have a, an enormous headache <laughs> relatively soon. I don't know where it's coming from. There's this strange feeling that's put me off my chips. I have to say, I don't know this what is... it is, but. <laughs> Something's afoot, and so, I can smell it. Something's afoot. Oh, it, it's a, it's an ominous it's a, thing in the air. Oh, inspect, so, like somebody yeah. stepped in a big pile of <laughs> shit. So, inspect, you're getting a headache. What's that you're reading there? Oh, it's the latest, ver the latest issue of Ranst Magazine. <laughs> 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 
And all of a sudden, this headache's just come out of nowhere. <laughs> anyway. Uh, thus concludes Herlock Sherm's great deduction of this pawnbroking puzzle. Hmm, this oh, reminds me of a puzzle. Bloody Burke. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> um, Mr. Sholmes. Yeah. Should you have said Excuse me! <laughs> well, Mr. Narahodo, an impressively upbeat deduction for a detective wrecked with loneliness. <laughs> would, you, would you not agree? Was it true what you said about the bank over the road and what it has in its vault? Oh, yes. Allow me to clarify for you, but you mustn't tell anybody. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> For God's sake, just don't say it again. <laughs> Indeed, though. I also happen to know that the password is one, two, three, four, but don't tell me. <laughs> though few know of its existence, it is one of the government's most closely guarded <laughs> secrets. And I've just told the whole. Our uh, headaches this. just getting worse and worse by the minute. It's up so uncanny. <laughs> just. Oh my goodness. Unless. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full on migraine now. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what to say. The only thing. Wow. The only thing. The, the only way they could turn this round is if this is actually one big ruse and all of it is untrue and it's to lure them in. No, this isn't this is no, not, it's not gonna be a ruse. No, it's not gonna be a ruse. <laughs> it's not gonna be but a ruse. That would be good though. It would. But I don't yeah. think it's gonna be. I think Herlock's uh, gonna have got himself in I some just, very deep I water. I can't believe it. I can't believe <laughs> that we started a bit about it and it wound up being what actually yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> Gregson told me in the strictest confidence. It's like we know the character and his idiosyncrasies. <laughs> but you just announced it to everyone here. Uh, rather loudly, in fact. Yes, and so now I'm going to have to kill you all. What? Because I told you, so I'm going to I have to... I shall give you a Sasato takedown, Mr. Oh, Schultz! Uh, oh, oh no, oh no! <laughs> I have been foiled! <laughs> ah... And if it's such a big secret, how would Mr. Benedict have come to find out about it? Uh, uh, there can be but one explanation for that. Uh, clearly, it is because the man is a criminal. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, that headache. Oh, you're <laughs> sick. Where is that coming from? But what if he didn't know anything about the money in the vault? If he is a criminal, as you said... <laughs> Then, <laughs> buying a brand new shovel is sure to be the first thing he does now that you've revealed the secret. Uh, oh. <laughs> or, if he doesn't, maybe Mr. Winderbank will. He already has plenty of shovels here, after all. Own oh, my life! I assure you I'm not so unscrupulous! I like to imagine, he just like tosses a shovel inside <laughs> the fire. <laughs> well... Uh... Hopefully this has taught you a valuable lesson. Not to trust you <laughs> with any secrets? Uh, s sensitive information must be handled with the utmost of care. <laughs> yes, and you mm. appear to have dropped it all over the floor, uh, Mr. Jones. One can never be sure that someone privy to secrets won't disclose them. And once the word is out, <laughs> it's out. Perhaps I'll think twice before... <laughs> <laughs> I'll think twice before confiding in you next time, Mr. Shogun. <laughs> An excellent idea, Mr. Narahodo. An excellent idea. Oh, 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 why am I laughing? I suppose if I don't laugh, I shall cry. <laughs> it's because I've just realised what a great deal of shit I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> well then, Mr. Narahodo, you know what to do, I I'm sure. Yes, let's listen to that great deduction again and see if we can massage it into uh, shape. M m uh, m Mr. Benedict, where are you going? W w why are you leaving? No, no, you can't leave. You uh, can't Gina, come back, Gina, please. come back. <laughs> but actually, that's a good point. Gina's not said anything. Yeah. 
Uh, very well then. Let's let us start once more from the beginning. Sorry, I'm just laughing and because let, I'm thinking. And just reiterate the information that I'm not supposed to have told you earlier. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Well, Gina's the thief. She's like, oh, well, this is a fine. Uh, this is a oh, fine kettlefish, isn't money it? Money in the bank is the oh well well. It's my lucky day. Although, uh, to be fair, when you you're sitting there going, oh well well well, money in a bank, eh? Whoa, I mean, that's so surprising, isn't it? There's, there's money in a flipping bank. <laughs> I just imagine she's like slowly lowering herself into the manhole, pulling the cover <laughs> down over top of her. You see, he's already across the street. Of Herlock Sholmes, magnificent logic and reasoning spectacular! Again! <laughs> Again. But now he's going <clears throat> to. Course correction! Hold it, Mr. Oh, Sholmes! Oh my goodness, so assertive. <laughs> oh, tunnel. Okay, we must ask ourselves on what business you ventured to this pawn brokery today. I cannot skip this. You claim to have followed this pickpocket here, having had the redemption ticket stolen from stolen from you on the street. But that Oh what, you can't like press the A button nope, to go to the next nope. bit? Oh, okay. oh that's but that is one. most certainly a lie. The real truth is something quite different. As revealed by that which you hold in your hand. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the staff recruitment flyer. Is it the, is the true thing on like the back yeah, of the probably. flyer? <laughs> So, by Mr. Sholmes' reasoning, Mr. Benedict came here in order to apply for a job so he could dig down through the floor. <laughs> yes, in an attempt to tunnel into the sewers to gain access to the money in the vault of the bank across the road. But I don't know about you, Miss Suzato, but I feel as though he's digging for, you know, nothing. He seems to be... I feel as though Mr. Holmes is digging for an answer that doesn't <laughs> exist. He's hitting bedrock. Well, it seems that Mr. Sholmes certainly did dig a big enough hole for himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without the shovel. <laughs> but he wouldn't get very far with a broken shovel, would he? No, I think it's fair to say his motives lie elsewhere. The question is, where? What did bring Mr. Benedict here at this particular point in time? What brought such a hard-boiled character to this pawn shop oh. today? Oh, look, there's writing on the back of the flyer. Who could have ever predicted that? Uh is that a little picture of Gina? <laughs> that's a cool picture. Oh, that's cute. I'm gonna take this up. She got a big I'm hat. I'm gonna take this opportunity to look around the shop. Oh yes, skull. <laughs> Is there anything on the roof? Oh, there's a. Ca oh, there's the camera. There's the camera. Look. The camera. <laughs> I'm just nebbing. I'm just being nosy. Uh, nosy all right. Okay. 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 Right. Boop. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Look at all the scribbled notes on the back of the flyer here. Uh, I don't believe it! What is it? Listen to what it says. Name, Gina Lestrade. Height, five... Wow, she's small. Yeah. Five foot two. Green cap, scruffy waistcoat, grubby white shirt, blue I mean, satchel, She's ragged. supposed to be a little kid, though, isn't she, Gina? She's like, she's ickle. She's, I think she's a kid. Well, she's like the same age as... No, well, Iris is ickle, but like... I think she, she's I think like she she's seventeen like or so. She's around the same age, if oh, not a bit older than Cesaro. Oh, I, I think. She's, yeah, I suppose if she's not a teenager, then, she's, then yeah. she's quite small. Then. Right. So. I mean, and this is Victorian England. That's like middle age at that point. <laughs> <laughs> died. Everyone died when they hit twenty-five. Or they or they turn into Mr. Garrett yeah, at Jesus, forty. Yeah, Jesus, forty-seven. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> it's a detailed description of Miss Lestrade. Goodness. <laughs> is he been a sketch of her? I love the little I do, I, It's amazing. I do, the idea that that's a sketch of her. I just love it. I think it's cute. It's cute, but it's hardly a sketch. <laughs> it's a little cartoon character. <laughs> I just, I love how big her yeah. head is. I just, I really do. It brings me great joy. <laughs> There's even a sketch of her. Hat and all. Although, if he showed it to her, she'd fire that smoke grenade launcher in his face for sure. And look, the details of this shop have been written down here too. Windy Banks Pawn Brokery, Baker Street. Redemption deadline, 15th of April. Which is today's date! Why would Mr. Benedict have all that information scrolled on the back of that piece of paper? Oh, there is. I like to imagine it's like Rienoski is literally just squatted down behind him, peering <laughs> yeah. up, and he's just like, Excuse me! Oh, okay, so we have... We uh, have I that. think that'll come into play later, I think. Yeah. That's a proper English gentleman's cane, isn't it? Look at the beautifully polished brass on the handle. Yes, but Mr. Sholmes is right. It's not the sort of handle you usually see on a cane. 
Perhaps it's the latest London fashion. I mean, that's just guesswork, of course. Perhaps you could adopt a cane, Mr. Narahodo. It might rather suit you. <laughs> I have a feeling it might argue with the sword around my waist. Nah. Okay. Stylish, Stylish hat. hat. Stylish. Uh, well, I mean, that's the only other thing to click on, isn't it, I guess? So. Mm. That silk top hat is whiter than white. Only an English gentleman could hope to carry off something so bright. But it looks so incredulous with the black overcoat, don't you think? Incongruous. Oh, incongruous, sorry. <laughs> Perhaps it's the latest London fashion. I mean, that's just guesswork. Of course, that sounds familiar. How about it, Mr. Narahodo? I think you'd look very fetching in a white top hat. Well, you know, I think it might look rather incongruous with my black university uniform, so... You'd basically look like he does at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh... It does, it does, yeah, it did get me. It's like, well, he everything else is white, so why is he a black, getting a black... Oh, wait, now I can present it. Sorry, the... You could before. It's, the, the icons disappeared. It, oh. it confused me. Take that! Sorry, I thought the present button disappeared, so that's why I didn't click on it. Yes, what brought you to the shop in the first place is this info about Miss Lestrade. Quite so, my dear fellow. Forget what I said before. It would it would appear that the writing and sketch on the reverse of the flyer pertain to the pickpocket Miss Lestrade and to Mr. Windybank's pawn brokery here. Ah! Uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh. You're, uh, you're, <coughs> you're, you originally told us, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you originally told us, uh. oh, there she is, that you had merely given chase after Mr. Strad stole the redemption ticket from you. But that, sir, is a thinly veiled lie. It is the information on the back of the flyer that led you here today, by which I mean... Here, to Windybank's Pawn Brokery, and today, the redemption deadline of that overcoat. So, you waited outside for the young girl matching the marching, marching, matching the description you have written down to arrive. Examine. <laughs> And you have gone to some lengths to hide the reason for your pursuit of Miss Lestrade. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. <laughs> the cane by which, uh, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. What a rot, I've, I've had this cane for years. The contradiction of which I speak is, of course, not the thing that I'm focusing on. Uh, um, what's a ferrule? Ferrule? It's the metal cap commonly found on the end of the cane, Mr. Narahodo. Ah, the bit that makes the nice clacking sound on the pavement? Yes, exactly. And Mr. Sholmes is right. It appears to be missing on this cane. But it doesn't actually look broken, does it? No, it doesn't. Though the gentleman certainly did recoil when Mr. Sholmes identified the cane as suspicious. In other words, there's some secret <laughs> about the cane that Mr. Benedict would rather we didn't know, don't know. Uh, Initially. Oh, oh, he's watching us, guys. <laughs> Look here, Miss Suzato. There are some letters on the handle. Ah, yes. Those must be initials, I think. In the West, it is customary for people to engrave their belongings with the first letters of their names. Well, what you don't realize is my name is actually Agert Gebenedict. <laughs> Agert Genedict. Agert Genedict. Genedict. So, Herlock Sholmes <laughs> would be HS, you mean. That's right. And the initials on this cane, obviously... Oh. A, oh, sorry. A? G? Why does it feel as though that's not quite right? <laughs> hmm. I don't know, maybe hey, his hey, name hey. is Egger no, Benedict. Hey, now, guys, guys, don't be mean. Maybe they don't read, you know, maybe they don't, They can't read English characters quite as easily as they can read Hiragana and can, you know, Katakan. 
So maybe they, they see that and they're like, oh, it's a, that is a bit strange, but I'm not, can't quite put it's my finger on Well, it's mind. upside down, so they must think they're numbers instead That's of it. letter halves. Oh, uh, anyway, let's present this. Boom. Because it's obviously this. Take that! Zoom. The contradiction of which I speak is, of course, the initialing. A most astute observation, wouldn't you say, Mr. Eggert Benedict? We are led to believe, sir, that your initials are E.B. Yet in a most possessive manner you have in your grasp a cane bearing the initials A.G. <coughs> Excuse me. An incontrovertible con contradiction in... Oh, for God's sake. An incontrovertible contradiction indeed, would you not agree? No. You're, you're wrong. This cane isn't... You said before that you'd had that cane for years. <laughs> so don't try to tell us that you just borrowed it from a friend or found it in the park. In short, though you hold yourself to be a, gen a gentleman, you have a, a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> you have withheld your true name. Uh oh. <laughs> You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? I well, I... And in your recalling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer of the next conundrum! Namely, what is the truth behind this rod you bear? Do, 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 do. The handle is the key to understanding the riddle. Let's consider the bare bones of what's happened here. Miss Lestrade redeemed that fine-looking overcoat. And now, a mysterious man has appeared, introducing himself with a fake name, and claiming that the overcoat belongs to him. But we know that he actually identified Miss Lestrade from a written description, which suggests that everything else he's told us is untrue. So, what we need to do here <laughs> is somehow prove that the overcoat cannot possibly belong to him. Uh, oh, there's a rip in it. <laughs> oh! The seam on the shoulder there is coming apart. Look! So it is. Do you know, a moment ago when Mr. Benedict was surprised by something that was said, I thought I heard him make rather a strange noise. It sounded a bit like a tiny growl. But now I think it was probably the sound of his seam ripping open. If you look closely, it does seem to be a very tight fit. The sleeves are stretched to bursting, and he wouldn't have a hope of fastening it at the front. If you were to run around it, I'm sure the whole thing would fall apart. Hmm. That I'd like to see. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Thirsty Sasaki. <laughs> <Thirsty society. laughs> so how can we make Mr. Benedict run around? <laughs> She's really giving this some thought. <laughs> Well, I think that's obviously going to be it, isn't it? Hmm. How we can prove that how we can prove the coat isn't his? Mm. It's too small. It's too small for him. The split seam, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle. You see. Ah. Oh. Yes, because the overcoat is rather obviously a poor fit. Having forced it over your broad shoulders, your broad, strong shoulders. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> having forced it over your broad shoulders, the seam is already breaking apart. My suspicion. <laughs> I love that he just slid in to do that. <laughs> My suspicions were aroused from the outset. Mr. Shobes, you're very aroused today. I'm very concerned. <laughs> when you so boldly, bol, bol, boldly, boldly lied. when you so boldly lied about your name and so boldly waylaid this pickpocket, why is it spelt differently? To boldly go where no man has gone before, <laughs> with a smooth head. <sighs> this catalogue of untruths has all been for one very specific purpose. To steal the article that the young girl redeemed from Mr. Windybank. Gah! 
But what really irks me is this. The considerable crime I initially imagined has been considerably curtailed. And so I probably shouldn't have mentioned all of that stuff before. <laughs> <laughs> Bugger. <laughs> to abscond with a redeemed <laughs> Oh, goodness. I put my foot in it again, haven't I? Do you think we can perhaps just forget about all of this? <laughs> now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. I'm going to tell you all about it again, even though I know it's wrong. Mm. <laughs> this is utterly absurd. <coughs> You suggest that I, a, fi a, j a fine, a fine lad, a fine strapping <laughs> lad, designed a wheeze to filch some tawdry article of pawnage? Have you forgotten that I reclaimed the article in the proper manner, using the watchword? I was going to skip through all, skip through all this, but I don't <laughs> think that was said. No. Had I not been the one to deposit it in the first place, how could I possibly have known the relevant details? Nessie pa. Nessie pa. Yeah. Uh, Oh, but the watchword can be discovered. As you are only too, only too well aware, Mr. Benedict, and your furtive glance... <laughs> ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? What? Let us consider how one might learn a secret watchword relating to the pawned property of another. The method is revealed for the council notice. No, you fool. It's really weird because obviously they've sort of mixed it now. And it's like, I don't know whether to skip bits or whether to read through it, but um, it's blatantly like yeah, garbage. They've changed it. The direction of the deduction must change rather dramatically now, I think. Yes, no more talk of tunneling into the sewers. Which is a pity because it all sounded rather exciting. <clears throat> anyway. You can't deny that this mysterious gentleman did know the watchword. Mm. Mm. Yes, Professor. <coughs> if you didn't know that word, Mr. Windybank would never allow you to redeem the article. Or, looking at it another way, if you did know that word, Mr. Windybank would allow you to redeem the article whether it was yours or not. So the question is, could this gentleman have found the watchword out somehow? Oh, little picture of an ickle kitten. Where, where the picture yeah, yeah. of the kitten? It's there, look, on the on where, where the the paraffin lump. The oil oh lump. yes, which we cannot click on to look at, but it's obviously this. Very sad. The note, the notelet. I've never heard it called a notelet before. Look at this, Mr. Zato. Ah, it appears to be a memo that Mr. Windybank has scribbled to himself. Let's see, what does it say? Oh, excuse me, that's actually quite confidential. I don't really want you to see the... the what? Oh, <laughs> oh! Professor! Hmm. Uh, Mr. Wonderbank must make a note of the watchwords his customers give him right before their eyes. And in alarmingly clear script as well. <laughs> that's clear oh, script? Yeah, I, I don't know where to look. Who knows what other secrets I might see? <laughs> I don't want to see his underpad draw. <laughs> no. Gross. Okay. The method is revealed by the notelet on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. Yes, the broker here follows the same procedure whenever a customer comes to redeem an article. He asks the customer for the watchword and notes down the response uttered on a notelet he has to hand. Then he consults his ledger and confirms whether or not the watchword matches that of the article in question. Okay, I mean, I guess that's a little more secure. Mm. Kind of. I would expect nothing less of a diligent pawnbroker. But his diligence clearly has a disadvantage. But his diligence clearly has its disadvantages. What are you talking about? It is increasingly apparent that you were present in this shop before your accusation against Miss Lestrade. In all likelihood, you followed her inside and then observed her talking to Mr. Winderbank. 
When the diligent broker made a note of the watchword, as is his common practice. You observed him writing the word professor on the notelet beside the ledger. <laughs> and that, sir, was the master plan you devised to steal the pawned article from the young Miss Lestrade. <clears throat> Miss Lestrade. No, no, no. Young Miss Lestrade. <laughs> master plan? Which brings us to the to the final chapter of this lurid scheme. Why would you go to such lengths to redeem that particular article from this pawnbroker? Are you quite serious? For an ill-fitting overcoat hardly seems to justify the effort, much less a worthless music box disc. But naturally, you had very good reason to make them yours, didn't you, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard tells us all we need to know, apparently. The articles we're talking about are the overcoat in the music box disc. <laughs> are the overcoat in the music box disc that was in one of the pockets. Which, according to Mr. Windybank, isn't even worth a penny. And yet, this man went to such lengths to steal them. Why? I wonder if perhaps... We already have the evidence we need to explain it, Mr. Narahodo. <gasps> that will be why the music box disc was added to the uh, court mm. record. Could we? Really? I'd better have a thorough look through all the evidence we've collected so far. Yeah, so, oh yes, like, it must be my arm like, Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh. That's Kazuma. That's Kazuma's writing. Mm. I guess we could observe the disc. <laughs> yes. Oh! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Say, if only we'd uh, looked at the underside! Does it say f former gilded? It does. Oh, it does! Oh, ooh, hello. Things are getting a bit spicy. Oh, there's a little scrap of paper stuck to the reverse side of the disc. Look! And a scribbled word or two. It looks like somebody's name. Remember, they can't read English as m as well. <laughs> they can, but it's not maybe not as well. I'm just being silly. For McGilded. M McGilded? It couldn't be. But is it, Mr. Narodo? It is. Oh, but it is, Mr. Narodo. A name I shall never forget for as long as I live. But why? Why is his name on this? Dun, dun, dun. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Review scene. Return to. No, no we no, got it. No, 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 we have I to know. present. I know. I just didn't know that we could do this. You can look back at the scene and then go return to question. Oh. <laughs> I'm not willing to present it, Taylor. Jeez. You see, this music box disc tells us all we need to know. What's that? On the back? It reads, Form Gilded. Uh, oh. How's it going? <laughs> ah, Mr. Magnus McGilded. The unfortunate philanthropist who perished in quite curious circumstances at the Old Bailey two months ago. A prominent man in London, though his loan-mongering demonstrated a distinct lack of the scruples. So, you're an associate of his, are you? Or perhaps a subordinate? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGilded was a man of unusually small stature. In fact... If he or he was precisely the right size for that overcoat that you've squeezed yourself into. <sighs> Your true identity remains shrouded in mystery, Mr. Eggert Benedict. But the final conclusion here is crystal clear that the reason you came to this pawnbrokery today. Oh, here we go. There you go. All right. 
So, <laughs> three, two, one, <laughs> so two. Do we do I think we should count. Okay, yeah. three, yeah. two, yeah. one. Was, was to, to retrieve an article, article left behind by the late Magnus, Magnus McGillard. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. We were completely insane. <laughs> and I'm sure editing Pete I'm sure editing Pete will make that happen. I'm feeling well, the pain already. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Not a name I ex- No, well, well, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expected to hear in these circumstances. Mr. Sholmes, I'm afraid there's very- there's something very troubling on my mind. Pray tell, Miss Susato. Well, according to what Mr. Windybank told us earlier, today was the final day on which the coat could have been redeemed, was it not? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Today would be precisely two months since it was first deposited. Well, today is 15th April, so two months ago today... Would have been 15th February, sir. That's right. It's all carefully recorded in my ledger. Deposited at 10.30 p.m., I see. What? But but that suggests... Yes, 15th of February. The strings. It's precisely the day on which the omnibus murder took oh, place. So suspicious. Oh. So suspicious. Uh -oh. And half past ten in the evening is precisely the time at which the terrible events were unfolding. Suggestive is not the word. It would seem the matter is entirely beyond coincidence. You are, of course, at liberty to make whatever outlandish deductions you choose. However... Oh! I oh. must insist you hand over the music box disc... Music box disc... Now. Uh oh. Uh. It would be a terrible shame for you to return to your native land in a box. Oh dear. Throw him, Mr. Zato! Throw <laughs> him! Throw him now! Oh no! Absolutely not! Oh god! <laughs> there are some things a man must protect at all costs. This may well be one of those things. Then again, it may not. I'll. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Hold it! Mr. Windebank! This is my shop! I can't allow any harm to come to my customers. That would have happened. No. I should have to Wait, take my own life. For goodness sake, there's a pre more pressing matter Point here! Point it at the other guy! A guy is pointing a gun at your customer. It's not gonna help if you're dead. <laughs> for God's sake, man! <laughs> Grow a backbone! Just, uh... <laughs> Mr. Windebank, no! Alright, that's enough. Alright, oh, so that's Isaac enough! Gregson. Yeah! Hey, there he is. Is. It is I, Inspector He's Gregson from Scottish <laughs> Yard! <laughs> Inspector Gregson! I finally found the source of that blasted <laughs> headache, haven't I? I don't know what you mean, sir. What have you been telling him, Shobbs? <laughs> Shobbs! <laughs> what have you been telling him, Shobbs? <laughs> Inspector? That's right, sunshine. The alarm was raised on one of our dedicated emergency lines. So we got out here as fast as we could. Now, what's all this about, eh? Oh, praise be, you're here at last. I was moments away from forfeiting my own life in my very own establishment. Oh, I just... <laughs> you know, that sounds like a personal problem and I'm not really caring about that right now. It would seem you have the upper hand. Yep. Nope. And there I am, back in my white coat. Right! You lot have got some explaining to do! I don't appreciate being bothered with some petty argy-bargy! Argy-bargy. 
Artsy fartsy, <laughs> whatever the blast that means. Like shenanigans. Yeah. Predicament. Uh, some blasted artsy bargy. Petty? Mr. Windivang very nearly met his with his end. And, and they're not. Rianosuke is fine. Don't worry about him. It's yeah, fine. <laughs> son, son really. He's yeah, fine. by his own gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rianosuke. <laughs> like. Mr. Zato, your, your concern for my well being is so touching, Mr. Zato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by his own gun, as far as I can tell. Oh dear. Oh my. Oh goodness. And the whole of Britain could meet with its end if I don't get to the bottom of the case I'm supposed to be working on. What? What on earth is the case? Like I'm going to tell you, it's a top, it's a confidential secret case. Oh, you, you, yes, his case is so extremely important. It's all, <laughs> it's all about this bank. Oh, <laughs> I feel that he's head only head coming told again. me. <laughs> <laughs> he's only told me, but don't worry, I'll, I'll fill you in on the details later. I've got, some <laughs> I've got some juicy goss to, to discuss with you over tea later. <laughs> juicy goss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spare no detail, Gregson. I promise. I've I'm, already told I, them about I, I, the other thing. I'll be sparing all the fucking details it's around like, you, you, <laughs> you namby pamby flappy mouth, flappy mouth <laughs> nonsense spewing <laughs> detective. I won't tell a soul. I haven't told them about the, uh, the funds in the bank or anything. Oops. Oops <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I might have said a little too much. No matter, it's nothing to do with you lot until one of you inevitably gets involved in the court case to defend the person. Anyway, sir, you're going to have to come with down with the with the down 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 with me to the station. I got there. I got there in the end, didn't I? I was too busy munching my chips. I forgot how to talk. <laughs> but of course, Inspector. <clears throat> ah! Whoa! Hey! <laughs> What? Oh no, he's not a pirouette! He's <laughs> not stopping him now! <laughs> oh god. That's, that, I think that's, that's, that's uh, probably Gregson again. I think that's again. Gregson again, Tip. He's getting away! Get after him, lads! Whistle the beat oh, officer, no. too! <laughs> not the beat oh, officer! Not but Pa! <laughs> pa, oh, I promise! Pa, you know, earlier, pa, I promise, we, pa. we had finally been uninterrupted! And now we can finally yes, sit, we can finally <laughs> sit <laughs> down <laughs> and have our meal together, Pat. I'm so excited. I've, we've been waiting for the. Roller, get oh. off your ass and get this oh. criminal! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, Roly! <laughs> <laughs> sure! <laughs> sure! Yeah. Oh, but he's not going to chase oh, I'm Greg's too old for this shit. I'm not going anywhere. No, I've got to. Do you have any idea how much grace is clogging my arteries? If I start running, I'm going <laughs> to keel over oh, dead. Jeez. There's been a spate of thefts at pawn shops around here recently. So we've fitted emergency buttons underneath the counters for brokers to let us know when there's trouble. 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 <laughs> With a capital T, and that and rhymes about, with P, and that stands for And about, oh, about five R's. <laughs> trouble. 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 <laughs> Trouble. Oh, Inspector, I was very worried there for a while. Very worried indeed. Now then, Mr. Permanently in Morning. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll be taking that whatever it is of McGilded's down to the yard, thank you very much. So hand Can it over. Take it all the way back to Scotland. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. No, don't. Don't give it in. That's mine, that is mine! I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGilded has to be taken in as evidence now. As evidence? If the police demand something as evidence, my d evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. It's all yours, Inspector. You and I will have words later. Oh, no, yes. Over a nice candlelit dinner, I presume. <laughs> It'll be our last meal, yeah. to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we handed Mr. McGilded's disc over to Inspector Gregson, and was summarily turfed out of the shop and onto the street. 
to be continued. Which is cool because it's timed it just about right because we're out of time, yeah, everybody. That was, that was pretty good timing, to be fair. <laughs> So, no. Yes, sadly, sir, we'll have to find out next time what is going on with the mystery disc, I suppose. Uh, so while we're saving that, thank you so much for watching and joining us once again on our silly shenanigans. If you do like what we do, don't forget to like, comment. Yeah, we'd, we'd like to read the comments. So, yeah, comments are good. Drop a comment Drop down below. Drop a comment. Ring the bell so you get notified of our after, video. After you hit the subscribe button, of course, because if you don't hit the button, then the bell ain't there. Thank you, Pete. Sarah, I feel another <laughs> headache coming on. I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, I know the feeling, Gregson. I have a headache too, and it's sat next to me. Anyway. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the notification bell so you get notified of our video up uploads every Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See you in the next one. See you later, guys. And remember, if you ever have something to hide, the best way to hide it is to put it on the reverse of whatever you're carrying. No one's ever gonna see it. And then tell everyone all about it. <laughs>